Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 55 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about cross-page posting in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 52, 53 and 54 of this video series. Cross-page posting allows us to post one page to another page. By default, when you click a button, the web form posts to itself. If you want to post to another web form on a button click, set the post back URL property of the button to the page that you want to post to. Let's look at an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have an ASP.NET web application project here with two web forms. On web form 1, I have got two text box controls where the user can enter their name and email and I also have a button control. Now the idea is when I click this button control, I want to post to web form 2. Now let me run at the moment, you know, the application doesn't have any code. If you look at web form, all I have is the design of the web form. On the code behind file, I don't really have any code. Now let me run this page as it stands. And once the web form loads, when I click the button control, look at that. Currently we are on web form 1.aspx. Now when I click this button control, you know, it will post back to itself to the same web form. But what we really want to do is when I click this button instead of posting back to the same web form, I want to post to web form 2. And to do that, all you have to do is go to the properties of the button control and the button control has got a property called post back URL. All you have to do is set this property to the page that you want to post to. In our case, we want to post to webform2.aspx. So click OK. And as you might expect in the source, it would have set the post back URL property to the page that we want to navigate to. That's the only change that we have done until now. Let me run the project now. And when the web form loads, when I click this button control, it's going to post back to web form 2. So currently we are on web form 1.aspx. I click the button and now I am on web form 2.aspx. So to do a cross page post back, all you have to do is set the post back URL property of that button control to the page that you want to navigate to. Now it's possible that on this web form 1, you can have multiple button controls. And when you click button 1, maybe you want to go to web form 2. When you click button 2, you can go to web form 3 or web form form 10 whatever okay now what else we want to do when I you know I can enter name and email of the user here and then when I click on cross page post back and when I land on web form 2 I want to retrieve the values that I have entered on the previous page and then display them in these label controls here let's see how to do that okay so on webform2.aspx in the page load event, I can make use of the previous page property of the page class. So page dot previous page. So this property is going to have a reference to the previous page, in our case, webform1. And you look at the previous page property, it's going to return a page object back. So I'm going to store that in a page variable. I'm going to call that previous page. Okay. So if previous page is not equal to null, then I'm using a method called find control. So on the previous page, find a control. So which control do we want to find? We want to find a control with ID txt name. So that's the ID of this text box control where the user can enter their name. So I want to find a control with an ID txt name and look at the find control method return type it's returning a control object back but we know that we are going to get a text box back so we can typecast that to be of type text box and then retrieve the text property and we can set this text property to the label label name dot text okay now you might be wondering why are we using this null check here now it's very important we do this especially if it's a cross page post back technique because this is webform 2.aspx this page can be re reached in a variety of different ways for example i can reach to it by a cross page post back or i can directly type the url for webform 2 and i can land on this page or i can 
I can land on this page, you know, using server.transfer or server.execute. So there are a variety of different ways that you can land on this page. For example, if you land on this page when the user types in a direct URL in the browser window, then previous page property returns null. When it, when it returns null, your previous page will be null. If that's the case, when you say null dot find control, it's going to throw a null reference exception. So to avoid this runtime null reference exceptions, it's better to check for nulls. Okay. Now, if we want to display the email, all you have to do is the same code, except that we change the name of the text box to txt email and the label control where we want to display to label email. That's it. Now let me run this project. And obviously, as you might expect, once the web form loads, once we enter the name and email, and when we click the button, you know, it will cross page post back um, to web form 2. And then on web form 2, we are able to retrieve those values. Now, a small trick I want to do here is now I want to display the, the name and email in the label controls only if I land on this page using a cross page post back technique. If I land in this page using any other technique, then I want I don't want to show anything. I don't want to execute this piece of code at all. And I you know basically um, want to display a message in a label control saying that you have landed on this page using a technique other than cross page post back. So first of all, let's have a label control on web form which can tell that to the user. So let me flip to the source mode because that will be easy. So copy a table row. And I don't want two TDs. I just want one TD there. I'm going to set the TD call span is equal to two. And then we are going to have a label control here. So and let's call this LBL status. And let's get rid of the text from there. OK. So now, here I'm going to set this. Um, OK. So if previous page is not equal to null, and previous page dot, there is a property called is cross page post back. And this is a Boolean property. And this property is going to return true if we have landed uh, you know, because of a cross page post back. If the previous page is a result of cross page post back, if not, this will return false. So I want to do execute this piece of code only if it is a cross page post back. Otherwise, don't execute this code. Else, what else you want to do? In the label, we want to display the message. So LBL status dot text is equal to you landed on this page using a technique other than cross page post back. So that's the message I want to display on this label. So let's go ahead and run this and just to simulate a non cross page cross page post back technique, let's add another row here. And then let's drag and drop a button control. And when I click this button control, all I want to do is I want to do maybe a server.transfer or response.redirect, whatever. So I'm going to say server.transfer. And I'm going to transfer to webform2.aspx. OK, so let's go ahead and run this as it stands. So when the page loads, we can enter the name and the email. And when we click on the cross page post back button, uh, as you might expect, this property of the web form returns true. So we get inside the if block and display the name and email. So let's see if that happens. So I enter the name and email cross page post back. So this is web form two and Prajim test. But on the other hand, OK, I have this data here. I click this button. Look at that. You landed on this page using a technique other than cross page post back. And to prove that, you can actually throw a breakpoint here. And then when we actually run with the breakpoint there, when we land on that page using a cross page 
post back technique obviously oh we are on web form 2 obviously look at this it's like now directly hitting the URL so this we didn't land on this page now using a cross page post back and on top of that since we are directly accessing this page look at that previous page itself will be now so obviously this piece of code will not be executed and when we press F5 look at that you landed on this page using a technique other than cross page post back now let's go to web form 1 and let's enter maybe name is test, email is test. I click this cross page post back. As you might expect, look at this. Cross page post back is true. Press F5, it displays that. On the other hand, when I click this button, cross page post back is false. So we can use page dot east cross page post back property to determine if you know we landed on this page as a result of cross page post back or not okay and now the problem here is we are using you know find control method on the previous page and if you look at this we're using the IDs here and let's imagine you know we have mistyped the ID of the control here for example the text box instead of txt name let's say by mistake I have spelled it as txt name and a number one or something like that now when this code when I build this application look at that on the status bar build succeeded but when I actually run this application you know there could be a runtime exception a null reference exception that's because you know on this page it's trying to find a control with the name with ID txt name one but we don't have a control with that ID so obviously this entire expression is going to return null and then you're trying to retrieve the text property on a null object so it's going to throw a null reference exception we don't get any errors at compile time they're going to happen at runtime which are definitely dangerous so I enter test and test so when I click this cross page post back look at that I get a null reference exception in the next video session we will see how to obtain a strongly typed reference to the previous page which can avoid these you know null runtime null reference exceptions on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.